Hello, listening audience, and welcome back to Toonkind at 12 frames per second. I am... Someone. I am Whirlwind Gale. I am here today with my delightful, wonderful, charming, incredible, amazing, <laughs> darling, dearest... Uh, <laughs> hi, uh... I'm I... running out of adjectives. I need more adjectives. I need to swallow a dictionary. I'm here with my friend, uh -huh. who's going to introduce themselves now. Hi. Say hi. Uh, yes, hi. I am Oatmeal. Uh, I will be playing the professor today. The professor who we love very much. Mm. Um, and that will be for this FPS, which is called Oh Thank the Stars. And uh, for any listeners who are coming into this after the fact and don't check the description of the YouTube videos that we post, first off, naughty, second mm -hmm. off, uh, we are on a medium to potentially high angst rate. We're a mature mm -hmm. on Xerox, uh, which is the same as a mature on AO3. And if you're listening to this, you probably read stuff on AO3. <laughs> so. Also, uh, very possibly spoilers for uh, the, mercenary the mercenaries and uh, the Diamond of Despair. That, that's what I was forgetting. Mm -hmm. um, expanded list of trigger warnings will be in the description. I am clapping and it's picking up on my mic. I need to stop doing that. That is... A... It's okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, that is a stim of mine. But it's yes, nice. we are here. Yeah. To FPS. Yeah, the professor has been... Uh, the professor at this point in time uh, has... Uh, recovered well enough that uh he's uh like pretty much completely so that he's actually allowed to uh leave the Leighton house and go places by himself <laughs> which he is <laughs> very happy about because uh as much as he loves the house and the people in it um this man cannot sit still um <laughs> so he's he's glad to be uh out and about but uh he does have uh, a particular person who was not able to visit him uh that he is going to visit hell to the yeah um he is finally <laughs> <laughs> the professor has escaped the couch <laughs> yes yes the professor is free <laughs> Uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to make the joke. No, it's good. <laughs> um. Uh. So he he'll show up at uh at Yu's uh, apartment, and as usual, he has not called ahead of time. Amazing. Okay. Um. Delightful. Uh, Professor, can you roll me perception, please? Mm. As you are walking down the hallway towards, or like you're standing in front of the door, basically. Ah, uh, okay. I think that's a nine. Uh, yep. Yeah. Normal door. Very, <laughs> very normal, very boring door. Um, normal, boring door. Mm -hmm. Completely ordinary door. Um, <laughs> do um, you knock on the door, yes. or do you try and just open it, or no, just gonna knock? knock? Okay. Yeah. All right, time for me to roll perception. Nat 20, okay. Woo. All right, you have your brain sc cell screwed in today, boyo. Excelente. All right, that is a 27. Ooh, my goodness. Um, so the professor knocks on the door and there is uh, from inside the sound of, you know, somebody uh, who just stops what sounds like pacing uh and then walks over to the door um there's the click of a couple latches being undone and the chain lock being undone mm -hmm. and then the door opens Hello. and Hi. professor make me a deck save ah oh okay that's a high number uh My dex is pretty good. That's a uh, 25. 
excellent. You are not knocked over. Um, so, Professor, uh, the person you came here to see, one Yu Ao Dienz, uh, opens the door to the apartment, uh, mouth open to, you know, greet you, stares at you for a second once he recognizes who you are, mm -hmm. blinks, and you are now being hugged. Aww. You are now being hugged with all of the force available <laughs> to this five foot nothing boy's skinny little noodle arms. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna, uh, ruffle his hair and, um, give him a hug back. Hello, dear. And he says some- He says something, but it is very muffled against your shirt. <laughs> what was that? Don't- Don't worry about- it. Oh, thank god I don't have to kill anyone! Hi! You're okay! <laughs> I am, I am. Oh my god, you're okay! I- I'm yes. so glad! Yes, yes. I'm alright. I really am. Uh, thanks in and... part to you, I hear. Oh! Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh... One of the assholes who kidnapped you is one of my classmates. Uh, it's- it's yeah. fine. I may have threatened to poison him over it. It's- mm. I'm not thinking about that. Do you want to come inside? Yes. <laughs> awesome! Uh, and you will step back and open the door. Mm hmm Yeah, he'll- he'll- he'll make his way in. Huh. Um, one more perception check for me real quick. Yes, I do hope <laughs> I can actually get a decent- Okay! Uh, 22. Okay! That's actually good enough to catch at least a little of what happens. Um... Professor, you step into the room, and it's fast. Whatever happens, your perception roll is really good, mm -hmm. but it happens so fast that it's not quite good enough to catch exactly what happens. But it's weird. It's like suddenly someone turned on all the lights. Mm -hmm. When you could have sworn that the lights weren't off before, but it's a similar feeling to someone turning on all the lights all of a sudden. Oh yes, it would be for him. Somebody with mm -hmm. dark vision. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it's a weird experience. Especially because you've never had that, because, you know, dark vision. Oh, but even more so, because with dark vision, all you can see is shades of gray. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> ah. <laughs> He just, he um, just sort of, like, just kind of does a double take and, like, looks around and doesn't see any obvious thing happening or something that obviously happened. Uh, Perfectly ordinary. Yeah. He doesn't know what that was. Mm-hmm. Um... And you kind of closes the door behind him, and uh, can I actually? I know that the professor is, you know, fully healed because you said as much. Mm -hmm. Can I have you roll a medicine check because oh, yes. that's what he wants to do in this moment? Yes, absolutely. Because last he heard from the professor, the man had poisoned himself. Also, that's a twenty-one, seventeen plus four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, with a 21, um, uh, he, uh, hmm, uh, he has no, uh, no visible or, uh, obvious injuries or, uh, or scars that you can see, uh, he is, uh, uh, moving fluidly, his, uh, complexion is about the same as it always is, and, uh, he doesn't seem, uh, weaker at all than usual. Uh, he seems to be just fine. 
you standing over by the kitchen counter, just squinting, just... Last I heard from you, you were apparently really hurt, and I am worried. Mm -hmm. But you seem fine now. Are you still gonna do this? Yes. Uh, he, like, squints at you, Professor, mm -hmm. for a second, and then turns around and starts pulling stuff out of his spice cabinet. <laughs> Or out of his spice racks mm -hmm. uh, to start making something on the stove. Mm -hmm. The professor just sort of walks over and tilts his head. Well, uh, what are we making today? Um, we are making you tea because you seem like you're fine, but also last I heard about you, you had poisoned yourself. Which, uh. what the fuck were you thinking? Don't do that! Please don't do that ever again! That was terrifying to hear about. Please don't do that ever again. Sorry, um, I will try my best not to. I was trying to, uh, admittedly, I was trying to poison the people attacking me. Um, I thought that um, uh, I would be able to handle it, but I was wrong. Clearly. Yes. It, it, it wasn't a lethal poison, at least. It was just... It renders mm -hmm. you unconscious. From, what it, from the sounds of it, they would have deserved a lethal, lethal poison, but that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kind of mutters that under his breath and then uh, grabs a couple of other things from the spice cabinet and shakes his head and um, starts a... putting them into a filter. That's a... Uh unusually violent of you. Are you alright? I... I don't like when people hurt my people. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the people who came after you, and I know the kind of damage he can fucking do. Mm. <sighs> I, uh, well, I'm not uh, not to... How do I put this? I saw most of them. Um, was it, uh... It, it, it wouldn't have been the, the Warforged, right? The... Oh, the Transformer. No. Um... And not the, I... um... Uh... Not the Vampire. There was a Vampire? There was a vampire. I, which one was a vampire? I was told there was a scarecrow and... That one. That one. Oh. A disguise. Vampire I... scarecrow? Oh, that makes more sense. I think. Huh. Unless that's their, um, thing. Huh. And, well, that Ugh. leaves either the blue girl or the uh, white cat? White cat? There was I... a white cat. Something... It, all I know is that it was magical. I don't... I don't think that cat was a cat. That cat was probably an ex-classmate of mine mm. who is usually actually an octopus. Um, That's... Wait, wait, you you said you knew, uh, Azul? Azul, yeah. Right, you had Azul told me Ashton you Azul Ashton Grotto. Because you had told, you had told me about one of your classmates having, having come over here and, and them being a, a merp person. Oh. Yeah, he's a prick. Ah. Uh. And he, apparently, after pulling that shit went rampaging through the streets of fucking Bill's town in the form of a tiger, which, oh. oh my god, how badly can you fail at being inconspicuous? Hmm. Uh, it was in the newspaper. Oh Holy shit, if you're trying to stay hidden, that's the worst way to do it. No, I can't say that was a particularly <sighs> good idea. Uh, although... Calls me up in a panic. No idea how he got my number. Mm. Um, startles me out of 
study fervor that I'd been in for two weeks, so I was, you know, running on zero sleep. Uh. I come down to the park to talk to him, and he tells me that he was involved in your kidnapping. Mm. I imagine that was not a great thing to hear. No, quite the shock. Yeah, I was really worried about you. I'm really glad you're okay. Thank you. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry every had, everybody had to get such a scare. It's not your fault. It's hardly like you asked for it. No, I didn't. Uh, I don't know. So don't apologize. All right. <laughs> you kind of, like, raises the wooden spoon that he was using and boops the professor on the nose. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I, it seems at least that the, um, the information was, uh, extremely helpful. I, I think it, um, they certainly found me a lot sooner than I thought they would have. Well, that's good, at least. They were quick about it? Uh, very. Um, I think, I think, uh, I don't know, the amount of time, it was honestly probably just the time it took for him to get to you, and then you to get to them, and them to get to me. Like, I don't think they did anything else in between, so... Mm. Well, it would have been him to get to me, me to get to Minami by accident, me and Minami to consolidate our information, mm. and, and then Minami to get to Moria, mm -hmm. And then give the information off, but... Well, I mean, with all of that, I, I really don't think that anybody, um, given how short a time, relatively short a time that was, I, 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 uh, it was quick. I'm glad. And you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but hmm. you weren't hurt too bad, were you? Uh, I can't say that I wasn't. Um, I was hurt pretty badly. Um, that's uh. why I haven't seen you until now. They, um, uh, I, uh, I get into trouble when I go out, so they really didn't want me to go anywhere, um, unsupervised. And rest jail. And, yeah, essentially. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, goodness. Although, it was hmm, mostly the vampire in the Warforged who, uh, really did the damage, I would say. From what I heard, that makes sense. They sounded like the most ruthless ones. They weren't they didn't stick around to help fight the others off? Uh, oh. Uh, no. Um, uh, I oh, guess- my goodness, I was worried about that. Yes, I, I, uh, don't think the contract required any of them to stay. My, um, er, the, uh, client- uh, their boss dismissed them, um... Right, the ambassador or something. Yes, once he had me. It seems that's all they were required to do. Makes sense. He, uh, had his, uh, own constructs to, uh, fight with later. Oh, a fucking course he does. Mm. Bad guys always gotta hide behind stupid minions. Mm. <sighs> you kind of frowns and um, steps back a little bit from the stove and um, I need to roll a con save. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. We're doing good. Um, he sings a couple of words in Old Trade. Mm. Um, 
and that uh, mixes into the bubbling stuff in the uh, pan that he has on the stove. Mm-hmm. Um, he uh, looks at it, um, puts the spoon in again, then tastes a little bit on what's the back on the back of the spoon. Nods and says, "Yep, okay, it's ready." Um, and he will grab two, uh, very silly mugs off of, out of his cabinet. Um. (laughs) Professor is giving him a slightly chiding look, uh, at using magic. Uh. Look, in my defense, it wasn't a full spell. Mm. Just enough to charge up the potion. Relax. All right. (laughs) Well, um, as I said, I I was quite hurt, but I've had plenty of time to recover, and um, uh, Dr. Everlight uh, was able to um, uh, help me out. Uh, <laughs> uh, her help was uh, uh, really... it uh, definitely needed that. Um, when I came back. I'm glad. Or I'm glad she was there to help. Yes. Is she doing okay? Uh, I talked with her. Um, she is still... She still doesn't want to talk about her overblood. Um, that's dangerous. Yes. I told her that, um, uh, that we had, uh, come up with a plan. Um, and she, as well, hadn't known about it. So I take that to mean that she hasn't been in contact with you, which is probably related. I- Admittedly, I've probably been a little harder to reach than usual. The more time I spend on trying to figure out my part of the plan, the more often I get (sighs) sidetracked. And he kind of winces at that and um, hands the professor um, a mug full of what looks kind of like tea, Mm -hmm. um, but has... Uh, sort of swirling glitter in it that makes like latte art <laughs> uh, and he hands the professor a black mug that says I'm awake but that doesn't mean I'm ready to do stuff <laughs> he chuckles at it and then sips the potion <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the uh, what is a drink or food the professor would associate with comfort hmm uh um I mean ironically t- <laughs> <laughs> um uh maybe uh I don't know maybe maybe one of the blends he keeps in the ellipsis is what this tastes like. Hmm. Yeah. He raises his eyebrows and takes a look at it. Swirls it around. Um, and while it doesn't do anything mechanically, because Professor has not taken any damage and does not have any levels of exhaustion, Mm -hmm. uh, it does make him feel, like, warm and fuzzy on the inside and a little more awake. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's going to drink more of that. That's really good. (laughs) So, uh... He kind of smiles and taps his finger on his own mug and says, Came up with this recipe when we were stock study... 
being three days in a row all-nighters for the Omni exams in fourth year. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. When you need to perk up a bunch of lunatic young adults who <laughs> have been slinging spells at each other all day mm. so that they can get up and go for another round. Sometimes the strong positive associations really help. Absolutely. Very bolstering. I'm glad. What does it taste like for you? Um, it tastes like um, uh, one of my favorite teas. Uh, I've got it in the ellipsis. It's um, uh, a little ironic, uh, but um, it's from Darth. Uh, ironic because um, I've uh, kind of been avoiding the place recently, but um, I still like it very much. <laughs> yeah, that is a funny little bit of irony, all mm -hmm. things considered. Mm -hmm. He smiles and takes a sip of his own. Hmm. Uh, thank you for passing along um, the information from Azul. Of course. I'm just mad that I couldn't be there to help get you out of that. Mm. It's... it's alright, and probably for the best, uh, it was difficult. Um, you probably heard how powerful uh, the man is. I heard that he was dangerous, and mm. I could make assumptions from what I heard. Yes. I'm assuming whoever it was that was able to go after you absolutely kicked his dick in? <laughs> Um, they certainly made a mess of him, yes. Excellent. <laughs> well deserved. Yes. And, uh, once he's gone, he shouldn't bother us again. Shouldn't is operative word, but... Oh. Problems have a tendency to make themselves known whether they should or not. Mm. Well, maybe the next time we meet, I'll be the stronger of the two of us. <laughs> I'm surprised you weren't already. You give the impression of someone who is very strong. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I guess I try. Uh, <laughs> um... It's, he kind of uh, just laughs and shakes his head and says, although that might be bias, given, you know, everybody who's taller than me seems super strong to me, and <laughs> he gestures at himself. That's not a high bar to clear. No, no. <laughs> uh. uh. How, how have you been? Um, it's been a while since we talked last. Yeah, uh, it has. Um, I've... How have I been? He kind of pauses and stares at the floor for a second. Uh, and the professor is welcome to make an insight check mm -hmm. real quick. Uh, that is, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, yes, uh, that's a 22. Impressive. For the professor, absolutely. <laughs> um. Oh, that's, I, the, the modifier is a four, so that should be 22. <laughs> Another 18 plus four. <laughs> yep. That was the last one you rolled as well. Um. Yeah, there's... Hmm. He 
he is clearly trying to think about how to answer this. Mm. But it's a little odd because it's not exactly like the professor can, you know, see the thought bubble over his head. But you know that sense you get when someone's kind of having an internal conversation with themselves? Mm, mm -hmm. It's a bit like that, but like the space between bits of mental dialogue is getting wider mm. with each sort of round of dialogue. And eventually he kind of just shakes his head and says, well, uh... I've made progress on the spell song, I think, maybe. Mm -hmm. Hard to... hard to know when... I mean, I made that, and he gestures at uh, the orange tree that is now in a small pot next to his trash can. You made... you made... what do you mean you made that? You mean you grew it? So you know those oranges you gave me? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, so I've been keeping those in the fridge and keeping them fresh for a while with, um, a little bit of magic from the mirror, uh, and I needed something organic to text, te test on mm. with, uh, the little, basically just, you know, testing to see if I could get the effect I needed right mm. for the song. Right. Um, that was the result of uh, one time when I got it wrong. Hmm. And um, now there's a tree. And Ooh. I couldn't bring myself to get rid of it. Because <laughs> it's not its fault. No. Uh, that is very funny, though. Oh, <laughs> he's going to, like, go over and crouch beside it and like start examining it it for all <laughs> intents and purposes is a very healthy albeit very small orange tree um with very saturated oranges mm -hmm. <laughs> well uh if this was getting it wrong um uh i think you're probably making good progress <laughs> yeah the intention is of course to yoink energy from living things and transfer it into well me uh mm -hmm. that kind of got it backwards <laughs> oh hmm. hence uh there's a tree now right uh and are you okay? Fine. Okay. I'm fine. It made my head go a little fuzzy for a bit, um, mm -hmm. but other than that, I'm fine. Um, mm -hmm. But orange tree? Um, mm -hmm. Something... Someone came to visit the other day, and eventually Jubilee came along, but I don't remember the rest. Um, you don't? But that was nice. Huh? Uh, no. I think... That's a little hmm. odd. Were you out of it? Uh, I don't know, sleep deprived? <laughs> when am I not sleep deprived nowadays, but, hmm. um... I think it was uh, Investigator Tome who came to visit. I don't remember why exactly. Hmm. Uh, we were having a conversation. And then it goes blurry. Why does it go blurry? Oh no. Uh. I... That feels like something I maybe shouldn't poke at. Hmm. I might poke at it myself from the other end, uh, see if he knows <laughs> what happened. Uh, that may be a good idea. I... 
That's... Hmm. I don't like that. Why can't I remember what we talked about? I don't know. I know Juby came over at the end. We had hot chocolate. That was nice. Okay. All right. Uh, that at least makes me think that it wasn't a... Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, a wholly bad visit? Um, still, very I don't think odd. so. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, I, that kind of stuff, I think is perhaps maybe better. I think it's maybe better if I don't poke at it. Okay, if you say so. Uh, yeah. I can um, take care of that. I'll let you know if you need to know anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, what were we talking about? He kind of frowns a little bit because this is a little unlike you. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he's usually pretty on the ball with memory and conversations, uh, at least mm -hmm. with the ones he's had with him. Um, but, uh, uh, he he gestures with his hand like, oh, it was um, uh, w what you've been doing lately, the, the orange tree, the visit. Um... Right, right. Sorry. I don't know what that was all about. Um, but I have made some progress. Uh, I think mm. I think I found the words. Uh, it's the melody that's tripping me up. Ah. All right. Um. I... I have the words. They don't make sense when you put them on paper, because old trade is fucking weird. Mm -hmm. But he kind of walks over to the living room, picks up a notebook from the table. Um, let me roll something. Professor is enjoying the potion. <laughs> <laughs> it it's the good soup, Your mm -hmm. Honor. <laughs> okay, that's interesting enough. Um, yeah, he picks up the notebook, seemingly gets distracted for a moment looking out the window, then shakes his head and comes back over. Um, and hands the prof opens the notebook to a certain page, hands it to the professor, and as he says, it is nonsense. It's... Mm. The words look like they're written on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And they look like scribbles or chicken scratch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the most legible thing about it is that there are little doodles on the sides of the pages of different things like flowers and butterflies and whatnot. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so you've got the words. That's great. Um, as for the melody, well, uh, I could try to help you with that if you like. Uh, I do know a thing or two about music. If you're willing, that would be great. Uh, yes, I'd be. Lo I'd love to. Um, let me see. I haven't. Uh, I have a instrument on me, uh, but I don't know if it's suited particularly well to this purpose. Um, What's the instrument? <laughs> Uh, he kind of, he, he grimaces slightly, uh, but like amusedly, um, and, uh, starts to pull something out of his coat pocket that shouldn't fit in there. Um, it's a set of bagpipes. Oh, um, <laughs> you just stares at this for a second and is very clearly trying not to laugh. <laughs> I think my landlord might be even more mad about that than he was about the boot print on the door. <laughs> uh, it is... Uh, 
Yes. Um, historically very good at upsetting people. Um, <laughs> he's going to put it well, back in his pocket. <laughs> they're good at upsetting people because people keep putting them in a context they're not supposed to be in. Well, he kinda... yes. That and also uh, they work very well um, to uh, rile people up on the battlefield. <laughs> also that... <laughs> You laughs and says, uh, I might have an instrument, but I don't... <sighs> we'll have to see if I'm able to pull it from where it last was. Mm. I don't suppose you play flute. I, I do, actually. Oh, hey, same. <laughs> um, and let's roll this d10 to see if we can pull this from hammer space. Holy shit, that actually works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You reaches into hammer space and pulls out a flute case. Mm -hmm. I don't... I think I used this for the VDC. That or it was for the music club. VDC? But... Uh... Vocals and dance competition, if I'm remembering correctly. Ah. It was this event back in the mirror back at the school, because, you know, mm. it was still a school. Mm. Um, and we were uh, competing against our rival school. Big musical so showcase. We got shown up by the stupidest song ever. Ugh. Fucking Neige Le LeBlanc, I swear to God. Mm. <sighs> Alright. It's well. just, it's really annoying when you put on a full musical spectacle and then get shown up by the equivalent of fucking baby shark. Uh, mm. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound um, pleasant. We were up against a pop star. It was not fair. Uh, no, that's hardly fair. But uh in case you're worried, it has been, of course, cleaned recently, so... <laughs> if you know how to play flute, you're welcome to use mine. Certainly. Uh, he'll, uh, carefully take it from the case, uh, give it a, give it a look over, um, uh, fiddle with the, uh, the, the controls. Mm-hmm. The, the valves, I guess. Your guess is as good as mine. I know nothing about instruments. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. I know, I know a tiny bit, but uh, I'm, I'm, I don't play flute. That's for sure. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I only gave you flute proficiency be mm -hmm. because he canonically plays one in game. Fair enough. Yes. Yeah, so this he... is also why he's good with a bugle. Nice. Yep. He would have suggested the bugle, but <laughs> landlord. Yeah. Landlord. <laughs> Uh, he fiddles with it and then uh, plays a, a few experimental notes. They come out as they probably should. All right. I say, as if I know anything about flute music. Yeah. Uh, um. He knows how to play, so yeah. <laughs> our characters know how this works. We do not know how this works. Mm-hmm. And you nods and says, okay, so the way that I, so the reason I've been having so much trouble with this is probably because I don't know how to read sheet music. Oh. I learned to sing and to play the flute by mimicking other people. Mm. So I don't know how the... I don't know how the notes look on paper. I never was able to get my head around how that worked, but mm. the way it typically sounds is like, and then he um, will, uh, for the audience's sake, uh, but not for the professors, uh, hum basically the melody for uh, the healing incantation from Tangled. Mm-hmm. But that's a lullaby, and while I've got the words down, having it be a lullaby 
It's too... He kind of waves his hands around and then tries to find the words. Uh, kind? Mm, mm-hmm, for what it's doing. Mm-hmm. It's... A lullaby is typically an act of love. It's... Unless you're singing something like, you know, No One's Going to Harm You from Sweeney Todd. Mm. Uh, a lullaby is typically something you sing for someone you care about to help them feel safe and at peace and help them relax. Yeah, typically. So, lullabies don't work for selfish magic. Huh. Uh. If only our magic worked the same. Um. Well, huh? um... Let's see. We can probably turn that into something. Uh, let's see. Were you thinking something peppier, something darker? Uh, I know very well how to twist a tune um, to various purposes. Well, um, hmm. I've been trying to... As much as I would like for making it brighter to work, mm. making it brighter would probably have the effect... Because light goes out, dark pulls in, so... It wouldn't work if I made it brighter... If I made it brighter, it would probably... Expand so that it would be healing other people, transferring life from local plant life into mm. uh, local creatures, which wouldn't be the desired objective so darker is probably the way to go because dark draws in light and that means the drawing in of energy mm -hmm. okay sorry this probably is a little weird by your world's magic standards uh uh not quite um i mean uh our magic depends probably less uh on oh no that depends what kind of magic i don't know um bars get a bit of leeway um i think uh in maybe precisely what the uh verbal component to a spell must sound like for the spell to work um we mm -hmm. can uh change it to the tone without um altering the desired effect uh, in this case uh, we are altering the tone because we want to change the desired effect. Mm-hmm. It's, Yeah, uh, that... Yes. It's a lot less intent-driven here. Mm-hmm. Your magic works a lot more like the magic they had in the textbooks back in the mirror, where it's... You put in components A, B, C, and D... And you get effect E. Mm -hmm. Whereas this kind of magic is weird because you can put in effects, you can put in components X, Y, and Z, but whether you get reaction W or reaction A is entirely result in, is entirely the result of what order you put those components in. Well, uh, uh, magic aside, I've, um, I certainly hope know how to make, uh, <laughs> uh, make a lullaby darker than it should be. So this shouldn't be an <laughs> issue. It's not the hardest thing, admittedly, but thank you very much. I, it's definitely not something I know how to do. Mm. I just have heard it done before because... Why are creepy lullabies such a trope in horror movies? Uh, I don't know. There's a certain appeal to them, I suppose. I guess. Could you roll insight? <laughs> <laughs> I would be delighted to roll insight. Mm -hmm. If the thing would fucking... Ah, clicky, clicky, clicky. And 
and that's a nat 20. Oh my god. Which makes that a 30. <laughs> okay. Um, my boy is good at one thing and one thing only. <laughs> this uh, is his best proficiency. Mm -hmm. um, from his odd comments and expressions uh, and the tone in his voice, um, it seems like he has experience with um, uh, a lullaby being... Uh, having the mood of it changed um, mm -hmm. with uh, 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 in in uh, 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 I guess with as as part of magic and probably firsthand and probably recently. Oh. Oh dear. Uh, and out of character, this is fascinating to me because <laughs> um, there's uh, there's lore here that is in uh, the mercenaries that <laughs> he just did. Um. Ah yes, the one that I still have to catch up on. Ah. Uh. Oh boy. Um, but noticing that you will kind of pause and say, uh, although if it hits too close to home, I can figure it out myself. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I, uh, I, hmm. I guess I'm just a bit, uh, spiteful uh that somebody um used what they knew was my uh favorite childhood lullaby against me oh that can i punch that person for you please <laughs> uh that's incredibly rude very um, if, uh, if you see that, uh, ambassador fellow, uh, go ahead and give him one. With pleasure. <laughs> uh, but, uh, oh, that is in his stupid mustached face. <laughs> um... But yes, that said, no, I'm really just a bit sour about it, but um, it it's not going to upset me. All right. Well, if you're sure. I'm sure. Thank you. Mm hmm I... Look, I... I will always appreciate your help. You've been absolutely indisposable in fixing so much of this, but at the same time, you're... You're someone I care about, and I I don't like it when the people I care about get hurt, and I especially don't like it if they get hurt trying to help me. Uh, well, so I don't want you to do anything that will make you sad. I see. Well, that's that's very kind of you, dear. I'm very considerate. Um, but uh, for this. Uh, I really, I really will be all right. You gives him a little salute. All right. So, uh, let's see. For the first, uh, yes, we can start with the first few lines. That's a repeating refrain. Um, how mm -hmm. about, uh, and he'll play something that, uh, tweaks the melody into um, a different key uh, that is uh, it's certainly not as bright and uh, sort of soft and kind as the original 
um, mm-hmm. but might not quite be what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't we roll Arcana to see how this goes? Sure. I feel like that's a safe roll for this. Yeah. Arcana or performance, either one. Oh. Yee. Well, uh, going with Arcana, um... Whichever's better, honestly. For me, that's gonna be performance. Uh... <laughs> then go ahead and use performance, and I'll use Arcana. Okay. okay. Um... That's gonna be a 17 for me. And a 21 from me. Hmm. Um. So, they try that one, and you, uh, picks one of the oranges off the tree, uh, and sings the lyrics in time with the music, um, and the... It's a little weird. The orange in his hand, um, kind of rapidly decays. Mm. But then, you know how there's that whole thing with the cycle of decay, where eventually when something gets rotten enough, it brings new life around with it? Mm-hmm. It's that. It's... Mm. He's holding the orange in his hand and, you know, rolling it between his hands as he sings, and it goes all moldy and squishy and gets crushed between his hands, but then when he opens his hands up, there's a little orange sprout. Yeah, the seeds from inside the orange have sprouted. (laughs) And he uh, clicks his tongue and says, dang, that is the second time that's happened. Mm. (laughs) Okay. All right, well, I think we're on the right track, but not quite there yet. Uh... Yeah, it it felt like, and this is where the Arcana check comes in, Mm -hmm. it felt like it was draining the energy, but it kept it ambient, and then at the end pulled it back into itself, rather than, rather than transferring it to another host. Hmm. Fascinating. Mm. But not quite what we want. Not quite. And you will pause and, like, go over to his pantry and pull out a little cereal bowl and grab, like, a scoop of dirt from a bag of potting soil next Mm. to the fridge. (laughs) And (laughs) plant the orange sprout in a cereal bowl. Uh, we're gonna have because... some interesting plant experience by the end of this. Reasonably, he should just get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, for reasons, he doesn't want to. He feels like... bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the plant's fault. The plant didn't ask to be made. The plant didn't <laughs> ask to be used as a vessel by which you know, a problem can be solved. The plant shouldn't be punished for its failure. Mm-hmm. He does kind of smile and tilt his head a bit. Um, he says, you might have to... I, uh... I understand why you're keeping this in this instance, but, um... You do understand that uh, when this is to be implemented and fully put into practice, uh, it is uh, very probable that we will uh, have to uh, have to kill a probably fair diameter of plant life. I know. I... It's different. That's... That's stuff that already exists. Okay, alright. And I I can feel bad about that 
afterwards. Okay. As, but as, this is something that didn't ask to exist and just started exist be existing, and I I'd feel bad if I heard it. All right, all right. As as long as we're on the same page with regards to the end result. I know. All right. I can go back and plant some trees there to fix it later. Yes. Uh, but at for least the... if it works. <laughs> uh, yes. And if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you and the rest of my friends are obligated to at least plant one tree there, please. Understood. Thank you. All right. Uh, but yes, uh, any replanting will have to be done by hand and not by the spell. So let's try and do that uh, differently this time. Um, mm -hmm. And he's going to make up... Uh, he's going to tweak the melody some more... Um, uh, kind of just put some more uh, intention behind it uh, as a musician. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's, I mean, there, there's a lot about uh, putting intention into art to make it go the way you want it to, uh, which seems fitting for this kind of magic. Mm hmm. Yep, that is basically how this kind of magic works. Yeah. Um, do we want to make our rolls again? Yes. Let's. Oh. Alright, well that wasn't, uh, that wasn't better. But he's a bard, so it, it still came out of 15. <laughs> That's not bad! <laughs> uh, it's better than what you got. You got a 14 on the Arcana. Mm. Um, I think this time, uh, it winds up a little further away from the intended result, where, um, I think the orange kind of wobbles in place for a minute, <laughs> and then splits cleanly down the middle. <laughs> well, um... um I mean, I guess that's dark, but not quite the kind we were looking for. No, that would be very horrifying as an orange, but... Yes, let's not. Uh... I think... <laughs> I think it's too... I don't have the right words, but I think it's too focused? Too mm. precise? Uh, maybe it needs to be more diffuse. Maybe. Hmm. hmm. And you will pause and then hold half of the orange out to the professor. Yeah. Honestly, he will ha he will hold both halves of the orange out to the professor because I just remember he can't eat anything. <laughs> it would be funny if he held one out and then like looked down and then held the other out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you. Um... Uh, he, 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 he takes a bite of one, uh, and then, uh, sets them both on the counter for later. <laughs> it has a weird effect in that it feels like you're biting into Pop Rocks. <laughs> he makes a bit of a face. Oh, okay, I shouldn't have expected that to taste normal. It was grown with magic, so... No, I... I really shouldn't have expected it to taste normal. What does it taste like? Does it not taste like an orange? I mean, it tastes like orange, but it's like orange candy, like popping orange candy. Oh, like orange pop rocks? I guess. Wild. Very I wonder strange. if that's just, I wonder if that's just because of what we just did to it, or if that's all of them on the tree. He, know. like, looks at the ones on the tree and raises an eyebrow, like, kind of suspiciously. <laughs> like, are you normal? Well, if we what? mess up another one, I can test that. <laughs> as long as it's I not guess rotten. Yes, you can! <laughs> yeah, don't eat rotten fruit. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that would be... That would be bad. That would hurt your stomach. No don't do that. 
<laughs> uh, all right. Um, all right. Let's focus. Maybe. Uh, oh, same intention. Uh, dark notes. I can try maybe a slightly different key. Uh, and maybe. Hmm. Maybe give it a little less power. Uh, well, uh, less mm -hmm. loud. I'm not sure. Uh, he's he's thinking about something, and he's he'll uh, he'll change something. Uh, I'm not sure precisely what, uh, but mm -hmm. it'll come out a little different. Um, uh, it's it's certainly following the path that they um, want to do, but we'll see if it's quite right. If we roll again, Yee. <gasps> okay, you're not gonna believe this. I got a nat twenty. Holy shit! All right, let me see what my arcana pulls up. Not as good, but it's a twenty-one. <laughs> Whoa! All right, so it's a total of twenty-eight. <laughs> 28 and a 21 to understand. Um, so, hmm, how to flavor this? Um, so, Professor, you contemplate for a minute and uh, kind of experimentally try out the notes that you were thinking. And you, as he has been doing, um, copies back with the words. Mm -hmm. And this time, uh, with the test orange, as, as you play and as you sings, it drains of color um mm. have you seen those things where like those science videos where they take all of the grape out of a grape and leave just the grape ghost behind <laughs> I think so it's a bit like that where first it drains of color then it drains of the way that the light affects it. Mm. Until it's sort of just a hollow, semi-translucent white outline of what an orange should be. And you can see the segments of the orange in there. Mm -hmm. And you can see the seeds and you can see, you know, the individual pips all outlined in this white. It's like all made of glass. Yeah, exactly. Like if you went poof and turned an orange into glass, you'd be able to see through it. Mm-hmm. With like a bunch of little bubbles suspended in it to sort of outline the shapes of the orange's internal structure. Yeah. And you blinks and looks a lot more focused than he has pretty much the entire time you've been here. And it's only with that sudden influx of focus that you sort of recognize how unfocused he's been this whole time. Mm -hmm. You noticed it a little bit earlier with the way that he got distracted mid-conversation and seemed to forget what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. But this, whatever that effect was, mm -hmm. made that go away. And he blinks and says, that was it. Oh. Good. Uh, really good. That... Oh, that's gonna be an interesting feeling to unpack later. Hmm. Huh. Um. You look a little more clear-eyed. Do I? A bit. I mean, uh. you've been... I mean, I can't blame you for being a little, I mean, given 
the whole state and not being able to sleep well, I didn't, you know, but... Yeah, the... The lag between real me and this was getting a little strong. I didn't recognize how strong it had gotten. Jeez. Uh, all right. Well, now we have this. Yeah, that... That definitely worked. It felt... It wasn't warm, but it felt like someone lit a candle in my chest, but mm. without the heat. Mm -hmm. That... That... That'd work. That would definitely... That would at least keep me alive long enough to get into the state of overblot. I don't know if it would keep me alive long enough to get me out of it, but to be honest, as long as I can get through going in, going out is probably easier, because I... I assume this world has... I mean, I read that this world has some kind of magic that can fix someone if you catch them quick enough after they die? Ah. Yes. Um, I would have to make sure somebody has that prepared. Uh, there's a few different... Uh, yes. The only thing that I would worry about is, or the reason that getting in is more important than getting out is that Getting out shouldn't cause damage. It's a rapid expulsion of magic, not a rapid influx of magic. It shouldn't burn the way that the rune usually does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I die before I can get in, then the problem doesn't go away. Well, technically it goes away forever, but I, you wouldn't be able mm -hmm. to bring me back. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we'd rather like to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been getting that impression. It's strange, but nice. <laughs> I'm honestly not used to people caring this much, but mm. it's a nice change of pace. Um, mm. That felt strange, though. I... Uh, it wasn't strictly necessary. I don't think I'd ever like to use that. Ah. But unfortunately, necessity requires that we do things we don't like to do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't technically break any of my rules. So... Mm -hmm. If it'll work, it'll work. Yes. He kind of smiles at you, Professor, and says... You know, every time I talk to you, we wind up finding some step towards fixing this thing. You really are a lucky charm. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I can help. The next step would be to ask someone to take me out to find somewhere where I could do this. Mm. Could probably ask Jubilee. He's got the wings so he can, you know, probably search ground faster than I can. Hmm. So he knows, knows his way around, at least around this area. Mm-hmm. And I think the last... the first time we ever properly met... well, even then it wasn't a proper meeting, but the first time I interacted with him in regards to the overblot, it was in the woods. So presumably he knows the woods around Villstown decently well. Mm. I could probably ask him to help me find some place reasonably sized. It'd need to be somewhere... Ideally some kind of field. Mm -hmm. Somewhere with no access to a major water source, though. Mm. Because if this shit gets in the water, the entire purpose is defeated. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll avoid any uh, creeks and rivers uh, and just um, look for 
well, I might, I might, uh, I might give him some tips for how to uh, avoid um, a place that's a significant piece of a watershed uh, if we're really going all out. But um, we can find a suitable mm -hmm. place. And then it would be just a matter of getting Crystal settled. Yes. Because I don't... I... She needs to go before I do. Yes. Because otherwise I don't know if we could fix her case, and her case is getting really bad. I... Mm -hmm. Her key isn't fully formed yet, but mm -hmm. her door is solid. Mm -hmm. And said that she wasn't willing to talk to you about it. Uh, mm, mm, not at length. Um, I think uh, we ended up, I'm not sure, it was either skirting around the issue or sort of uh, writing, going past it. Um, mm-hmm. I mentioned it, but it didn't turn into a discussion. Right. Uh, at the time, I... Uh, granted, I was um, fairly easy <laughs> to distract, so... Ah, uh, this was, I'm guessing, when she was reading you the riot act? Uh, something to that effect. <laughs> <sighs> Never anger your physicians, kids. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, and I, I have to I... imagine that this, oof, uh, this and, um, actually another, uh, case that I was involved with, um, uh, involved in with her, um, did, has probably not helped matters with regards to her mental health. Oh, I don't mean to pry, but... Any information we can get would probably be helpful. Ah, uh, well, just me being kidnapped and uh, not really being able to do anything until I came back. Um, mm -hmm. And then before that, uh, well, somebody else got kidnapped and uh, we were part of the successful uh, rescue party. So, maybe less so with that, but still, the stress of uh, having to go do that, and having to fight um, a rather powerful uh, opponent. Um, you know, mm. it's, it's not maybe exactly touching on her... Uh, at least if it is, I, I don't know how... But, you know, I, I can't see inside her head, but... Uh, but just, you know, more stress is more stress. Mm-hmm. And the faster... I mean, it doesn't work exactly like a poison or an infection, but heart rate does assist in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Incidents where you're physically stressed, even if you're not 100% mentally stressed, or you come down from the mental stress afterwards, mm -hmm. it can help exacerbate it, not nearly as badly as the emotional stuff, of course, but mm -hmm. it can still... it can still affect it. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm. Well, I'll, um, keep an eye on her as best I can, I suppose. I would definitely, yeah, try and do that, because um... I have the feeling hers is gonna hers is gonna bubble over soon. Mm. Okay. Typically, as the doors in Ink Space gain more vibrance, that's your hint that as they become more solid, as they become more colorful, as they become more real, for lack of a better sense, mm. that's your hint that they're gonna need to be used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know that they've been activated when the lock appears. Uh-huh. Hers doesn't have a lock yet, but other than that, it's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well. That is show that you guys are pretty good at keeping your friends okay, though. So <laughs> I have... I have utmost faith in presumably you and whoever else gets dragged into... <laughs> Yes. I only wish I could be there myself. It's my fault that she's infected more than the others. She got infected trying to help me. That's... She probably... Aside from perhaps it being... What am I saying? I don't think she would have it any other way. <laughs> no, but that doesn't make it right. Perhaps. I'll just have to do I'll just have to do my part when when I see you guys on the other side. Yes. You can help her then. I hope so. I've been really worried about her. She hasn't come to visit me since the last time we talked. Hmm. And she's a lot kinder than I think she gives herself credit for. She doesn't... I think so. No one here has deserved any of this. But she especially doesn't. No. No. She at least seemed uh, encouraged that we had a plan for for you um, I think uh, if I if I see her uh, before everything I'll give her an update that we're even well that we've pretty much got it that we've got that part um, because it, it seemed yeah. to at least I think knowing that that uh, that you would be all right uh, gave her some small amount of comfort. I wonder if... Uh, that'd be mean. Hmm? It'd be counterintuitive, but half of me wonders if... we could convince her to... stop rescheduling that mental breakdown if uh. she knew that was part of the plan. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't think so, and it would be mean to ask. You can't guilt someone into emotional vulnerability. No, and I, from the sound of it, she's still been working on trying to stop it and not overblot. Yeah. I really did hope that she would be able to find something. For her sake, if not mine. Mm -hmm. It would have been nice, but... Uh... From the way this thing works... Uh... It doesn't take being denied very well. No. He kind of laughs and does a little bit of a jazz hands. Mm. I'm living proof. I hope she'll be okay. She will be. We'll make sure of it. He looks up at you. Thinks for a minute. Nods. I believe you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Thank you for coming to visit, by the way. It really is a comfort to know mm. that you got out of that all right. Uh, of course. I'm... I'm glad. <laughs> I wanted to see you. <laughs> Consider me seen. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see you as well. I'm... It 
it was an ordeal, but I I really am all right now. Um, mm. What what uh, few loose ends there are to the uh, issue behind why I was kidnapped are uh, to be wrapped up soon. That's good. He raises an eyebrow. Um, uh, let's just say um, it's complicated. I I know the ambassador. Um, well. He's... You don't have to tell me much, but I did get from my classmate that he said he wanted to talk to you, and yes. Minami said something about it being a family matter? Ah, uh, I know, I suppose they did hear him say. Right, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's my biological older brother. Ooh. And we had a pretty serious misunderstanding, um, which resulted in a pretty, uh, severe dropping out. Uh. I, I imagine it would have had to be pretty severe if his solution to, oh, I want to talk to my little brother again, is kidnapping and partial torture. Yeah. That's fucked. <laughs> yeah. He, uh... like, That's just straight up fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes, it is. Not a, a, that's not a normal... That's not a normal person reaction. No, no, not at all. Just my opinion has not changed. He still sounds punchable. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. But yeah, uh, he, um. He owes me, so um, I'm going to, uh, hopefully things should be going a lot better soon. That's good, at least. Debts are useful for making that kind of person do what you need them to. Quite. You're alive, so I don't have to go and poison a man. <laughs> uh, was that um, something you uh, said to Azul? I, I I may have freaked out a little bit, mm. and he I may have fallen for a bit of bait. A bit of verbal bait. Mm. We were talking and I said something along the lines of if we are not able to get you back, and he kind of laughed at me and sort of taunted me and asked, you know, oh please what are you gonna do? Uh. And I may have snapped. Um, mm. You know that idea you gave me when we were first talking about how to fix this, of maybe passing some of it off to someone else. I, I remember. Yes. I may have threatened to do Ooh. that to him. Hmm. I... Not my shiniest moment. No. I see, uh, why. Um... And I don't blame you for it. Uh, <laughs> get that especially because he would... Especially because he would... He would know how bad of a threat it is. He's overblotted before. Ah, uh, right. Did fucking learn his lesson. Yes, well... Ah. <laughs> Still, not my best moment. No, but that's alright. We all have moments like that. You were pretty upset. Yeah. Well, um... If I don't die, there's something I want to say to you. So, hold me to that, will ya? 
Yes, dear. Thanks. He's a he little kind of... surprised at the sudden sort of uh, serious comment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's mm. fine. He just kind of shakes it off and smiles and says, But! That threat does not have to be made good on because the qualification for the threat to not be necessary was met and therefore I am not doing a bad and breaking a promise if I don't make good on it. Excellent. I suppose that follows. Um, uh, out of curiosity, um, because I, uh, I asked me to me about the one that she knew. Um, what, just because I, the detectives are going to ask me what I want done with people because they're not going to just forget that it happened. Can no, you, they're not. What, what is your impression of, I don't know, uh, what he's like, what he was like, uh, his reaction, why he came to confess? Oh, and before you answer i'm gonna let my cat out yes baby i see you all right all right, all right. one second <laughs> that's you yes 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 all right move, move i'm receiving a text move. or something my phone blooped at me I don't know if that picked up on the mic, but my phone did bloop at me. Oh, well, that probably caught on my recording. That's fine, I was just baby voicing my cat. <laughs> it didn't pick up. Oh, it's on mine, though. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that's alright, that's fine. He's a. Uh, You're so valid. He's an idiot. He stands right behind my like rolling office chair, and I'm like, I to let you out, I have to move backwards. I don't want to hit you, baby. Ah, <laughs> uh, Kibby logic. Yeah. Uh, yes. Kibby logic says I must be immediately underfoot right now <laughs> if I want to get what I need. Yep. All right. So yes, professor is asking like. What's what's the deal with this guy? Can you give me an impression? Um, Cause he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, you kind of frowns and um, will sort of gesture uh, at the couches and go to sit down. Mm -hmm. He'll follow. And you kind of props his hands up on, or props his chin up on the heels of his hands. Well, see, here's the thing. The others are going to want to bring him to justice, and honestly, I have half a mind to want the same. Mm. But... He did come to me with information, and mm -hmm. that's not something the Azul I knew from class would have done. He would not have, no matter what I threatened him with, he would not have given me information freely. I would have had to give up a lot in order to get that information if he were the same person he'd been when I knew him. Oh, there's something else. I think he left before all the others did, um, and uh, notably before they got paid. Yeah. I know why he was there. The ambassador, apparently, had enough money to provide him with some resources that he wanted mm. because he was looking for a way home. Oh. 
Oh. And you looks down at the desk, or not the desk, at the coffee table in front of him. Oh, dear. Oh. I broke the bad news to him, of course, because I know what it's like to be stuck in that spiral Mm. of looking for a way home that doesn't exist. Yeah. I don't like him, but he doesn't deserve that cruelty. Mm. Mm. To tell you the truth, I think... I think this shook him a lot. And I don't think any justice that could be brought on him by the police or by a lawyer or by the other detectives, I don't think any of that would be as much as apt of a punishment for him as whatever is going on through his head right now. Mm -hmm. Because now he has to grapple with the fact that he knows he's found the line that he can't cross, and he no longer has people behind him who will push him over it. Uh. And now he he knows there's no going back to what he used to know. Mm -hmm. And I, I do not like Azul Ash and Grotto. Mm -hmm. I need that to be perfectly clear because I need you to know that I am biased here. Mm -hmm. I think you said you punched him when you met him here? (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. I went to his club, his lounge... Because Jubilee had told me that, oh yeah, there's a lounge that I know that's looking for a singer. And this Mm. was, of course, back before, back before I was terrified of going outside. Mm. Uh, And I, I miss singing. Mm. And I've been a lounge singer before, Mm. for Azul. Uh So, I thought... I thought maybe I could go and look for a job, and then I saw him sitting at the piano, Mm. and my vision tunneled, and next thing I knew, I was up on the stage, punching him in the face, and then hauling him off by the ear. (laughs) (laughs) He kind of brings out the worst in me, but... Uh. All that in mind when I say... Unless you personally want to see him put in jail, which would be perfectly understandable. What he did was wrong and put you in a lot of danger and in a position with someone you were clearly trying to avoid. I, I don't. Unless what... Then I don't think... I think maybe the best answer wouldn't be to give him a second chance but would be to see what he does with this because there's a good lord knows the man didn't learn from the first time that he got fucked up and then beaten up about it Mm. I'm starting to think maybe that method doesn't work for him but All, of course there's the chance that he's just going to go and do something worse and in that case if that were to happen then I would fully say put him behind bars and throw away the key mm-hmm. but this was... as is when I saw him in the park I've never seen him scared mm. I've seen him cry I've seen him angry, I've seen him frustrated, I've seen him recognizing when he's lost control of a situation, but 
I've never seen him scared before. Mm. Whatever, whatever happened, whatever went down when he realized that the ambassador wanted him and the others to hurt you mm. further before bringing you in. Mm. It scared him. I think he realized that there are people out there who are bigger and badder and meaner than him. Mm -hmm. And I think he took it to heart when I told him that he was a fucking asshole for abandoning his bodyguard there. His bodyguard? His... Uh, the, the girl? The girl, mm -hmm. yes. Because apparently she had offered to leave with him. Mm. Asked to just give her a minute to cover their tracks better and they would have left together. But mm. He was freaked out. Mm. And I think that situation got through to him in a way that nothing else he's been through has so far. Mm. And I I gave him my advice, which was to run and hide and find somewhere where he can sit and stare at a wall and think about his actions and think about the kind of person he wants to be. Mm -hmm. hmm. If it were me, what I would say would be the best course of action would be to let him make that decision. And... If his decisions lead him to being a better person, then I am all too happy to just leave him alone and keep him off my radar. Mm -hmm. And if they lead him to being worse, then we can talk about punishment. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. maybe I'm biased. He, mm. you know, it would hit close to home to me to hear that motivation, but... Mm. Yeah. And again, ultimately, it's up to you. You were the one who was hurt in this situation. Yes. Yes, I... Mm. I just, you know, want to have all the facts before I make that sort of decision. I um. think he's genuinely having a bit of a crisis. Hmm. Which, crises suck, but they can lead to revelation. Mm -hmm. Um, I think... I... will probably take your advice, but for maybe one exception. Uh... And I hope that it might, uh, mm, help satisfy the others, but, um, uh... Ease the bloodlust a bit? <laughs> yes. Um, a very strong sense of, uh justice and um to an extent uh lawfulness um <laughs> yeah but i think i would like to hmm, i'm not sure when i think i should like to talk to him perhaps uh ask for an apology You can get an apology out of that guy. I, you're a miracle worker, but I think if anyone could, it would be you at this point. Okay. He's from the mirror, and he was born and raised there. He's mm -hmm. he took it pretty. He took the lessons pretty well to heart. Mm -hmm. He's prideful. He values. 
his self-image above all, and he's very used to looking at others and trying to see assets or pawns mm -hmm. rather than people. But he did seem to feel guilty. Mm -hmm. I think he knows he owes you an apology. All right. I think that's what I'll do then. Um, and I'll try to spin it to the others in a way that uh, makes it satisfying. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the tricky part. Mm. He is a criminal, but... If you need someone else to vouch for him, much as I'm loath to do so, mm -hmm. I'll tell them what I told you. I'm willing mm -hmm. to step up if need be. Because if this could be what teaches him to be a better person, I think I'd rather see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, as much as he was uh, probably a pretty crummy classmate to you. You seem to be a very good friend to him. <laughs> uh, well, that's... Thank you. It's something I've had to work hard to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Just because everybody else around you is awful doesn't mean that you have to be. No. No, and I, I think you're quite good at that remaining kind. That's a skill, and a very difficult one at times, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the best way to choose kindness is to choose it out of spite. <laughs> like, no, fuck you, you want me to be mean? I'm gonna be even nicer just to piss you <laughs> off. Because you don't know how to handle someone talking to you in a way that doesn't have 80 bajillion veiled threats <laughs> you fucked up little weirdo <laughs> uh, that is one way to do it <laughs> but mm. that being said of course if he does decide you know what fuck it I'm gonna get worse <laughs> I will, I can and will tell them where he probably would hide out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that sounds like a plan. Thank you for the advice, genuinely. Of course, and thank you for valuing my insight. Hmm. Of course. Alright, uh... Is there a way I can notate that, um, song for you in a way that you'll be able to read it, or... Would you, uh, just like some help memorizing it? Um, memorizing it would probably be best. I won't be able to... Even if I could read sheet music, which I decidedly cannot, and I... you wouldn't have it on you, right? I wouldn't be able to read sheet music. Even if I were to bring it with me to the site, I wouldn't be able to read it and cast at the same time. I would be too focused on the notes, and it would distract me from the intention. Quite. All right, uh, then, uh, do you want to, uh, get, uh, some more tea and then practice? That sounds like a plan. All right. And... Do we want to pan out from there? Yeah! <laughs> All right, we pan out from there with these two doing their music practices and probably making a lot more glass oranges. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of the glass onion. Now get ready for it. Glass <laughs> orange. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for doing this FPS with me. This was lovely. Thank you so much for playing with me. This was a delight. <laughs> uh, that is going to do it for us. Um, uh, thank you, uh, audience, present and future, for listening. Uh... 
we will see you next time. Uh, for now, we will wish you a good time zone. Bye-bye. A good time zone. Bye-bye, listeners.